I am so excited today to bring you part two of my conversation with author Sarah Farrell Johnson and her new book, Mama, Your Worth is Not Measured in Ounces. And you need to go see or listen to part one that was last week so you can get context. This is not a book that tells you how to breastfeed and nurse. This is a book about how to find your value, where to find your value, and very, very good, helpful tools and tips that mothers-to-be, new mothers, and mothers of young children can can benefit from. I have all teenagers now and young adults, and I find this book to be full of practical tools Things you can print off and actually do that I believe will help you sort out some emotions that are very, very difficult to navigate in this journey called mothering. By the way, let me introduce myself really quickly because I'm not going to do a normal formal introduction. I want you to get that on the previous episode on part one. But my name is Jill Falling. I am a grief and trauma therapist. I have helped families in crisis for years and years and years. I am now a coach who specializes working with moms and their children and transforming chaos to calm. Here's the reality. Our children do not thrive in chaos and we parent better when we're not in chaos. You do not have to choose to continue living in chaos and your children deserve to not be raised in it either. So if you are looking for better bonding, better communication, and you are struggling with what is going on in your home, what's going on inside of you, you can parent with no regrets. And that is why I have developed the program of transforming chaos into calm. I'm on most every social media site, usually under the name Jill Falling. You can find me there and I would love to hear from you. You can send comments on these podcasts, DM me, whatever you need to do. I look forward to hearing from you. So we start off with Sarah's Uh, not so fine moment, which as mothers, we all have them. And I feel like it's only fitting that if I'm, we're going to kind of throw her under the bus right out the gate, that I should lead the way and share one of my own. So roughly 23 years ago, when my oldest was a very tiny baby, he was roughly three weeks old, I think, something like that. And things weren't going uh, overly smooth. I was very frustrated. There was very few things that I knew to do to help him. Any, anyway, any uh, this particular day, he was also not sleeping very well. He was colicky. And I had put him down in his crib. I could not get him settled down. I eventually go back into his room. And I do what any educated, well-skilled mother does. I screamed at my newborn baby and said, would you just please freaking go to sleep? And just in case at three weeks old, he was thinking what all of us did when we were little, because I'm sure this is in the parenting book somewhere. If he wondered why I wanted to make sure to nip that in the bud. And I said, and because I said so at my newborn baby. Yeah. So The reason I'm sharing that is because if we're going to kind of throw Sarah under the bus at the very get-go, I feel like I need to, to lead the way and remind you that we are all mothers. We have all done those hard things. We've done the things that embarrass us that we would never want anybody else to know. But the truth is, until we're willing to share our stories like that, somehow we get this false idea that they've got it all together and that they don't do that. And that therefore there must be something wrong with us because they're doing it better and our story doesn't match the way their external story looks. I did nothing that day to help my son get to sleep. But what it did do is reaffirm what was going on inside of my own mind and that I thought I was not cut out for this. And therefore that moment I had assured myself I was not meant to be a mom, that I didn't have what it takes. So there's one of many of my uh, less than finer moments. And we're going to go ahead and start with Sarah and start with one, I'm sure, of many of hers. 
Again, keep in mind, we're doing this long distance, so heads up, you're going to need to adjust your volume because the interview is much quieter. I'm still learning. Give me some grace. It'll get better. All right, here's Sarah. I love your little story, the subconscious and raising our children and, and your little uh, moment here that you had <laughs> with your daughter, Allison. <laughs> and, Screaming uh, at my daughter. <laughs> yes. And, um, and I just love that because I've had the same moment in the car seat. Can you not just sit still and sit there and let me buckle you in? Sit still, damn it, Allison, sit down. <laughs> I love it <laughs> because I have had those moments and so has every mother that is listening to this. We've had those moments. It so very happens, so very often happens while get, trying to get in the car seat where everything that had happened previous to that moment had all gone wrong. And you were like, I had already been seeing everything in red. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this was me yesterday too, by the way. Was it my yesterday? daughter had been sick. Yeah, my daughter has been sick the last couple of days, not with COVID. Um, but she just, and then she's staying up late. And mama, I can't oh. sleep. I can't sleep. And then she's making excuses. And I'm like, oh my God, can you just go to bed? Yes. I need the one hour to myself. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing you say in here, motherhood tests us at a whole new level. And we were talking about this before we started recording, but one of the things and why I really have specialized in working with moms and transforming chaos to calm is because nothing is more vulnerable than mothering. And the reason that I think that is true is because nothing tests our patience. Nothing brings us to the edge of the things that we thought we had control over, like mothering. Serenity tool number five is silencing, uh, silence your inner critic. So I tried to throw, some, if you have the book, I tried to throw some humor in this one by uh, throwing some names in there and uh -huh. uh, trying to make people giggle. I don't know if it's going to go over people's heads or not, but um, there's this, there's this voice that we have in our, in our minds and we have an inner critic and I've yet to find someone who doesn't have one. Right. Although if, if we do, if there is someone, it's probably a male, not to be rude. Um, and this critic just like follows us around and just tells us how much we suck and how bad we are. And it's not good enough. And man, you look fat in that picture. And, um, you know, you're mothering the wrong way. You're just not smart enough, you know, and they, the more that they speak and the more that we listen to this inner critic, the more of a prime time spot we start to give them, it becomes really easy to believe this voice. But I just want to tell people that it's not who we are. It really just is not. It's just fear. Um, and we are not put on this earth to, to, to fear, you know. And yeah. so just my advice to people in this chapter is to, to keep it separate from you. Uh, you know, envision it as a different person. Give it a name. And tell it to shut up. <laughs> Just right. get out of your mind. Obviously, you know, one of the things that I thought about very often, that inner critic, which is important for us to realize this in our own life, but it's also important to us for us to realize as we are parenting our children, our voice and what we say to our children actually becomes that internal voice inside of them. So very yes. often our inner critic happens to be whatever parent we have that was the most critical. Yes. Um, and for some of us, it is the more perfectionistic parent, the parent that had the louder voice or the one we spent the most time with. We then become that inner critic for our children. Be careful, little mouse, what you say, <laughs> moms. It's I true. have to remember that all the time because as I speak to my children, so will they end up speaking to themselves and they won't even know where it came from. And if I am really harsh and I am really critical of them and I point out all of the things they're doing wrong, guess what they end up doing to themselves? The very same, same thing. thing. That's right. But the other thing subconscious. And the good news is, is that when we praise them and we point out the things they're doing that's right, which I really use a lot in my program, is changing the energy in your home and pointing out and catching your children doing the things that are right. 
you also affect that inner critic by enforcing positive reinforcement of what they're doing that's right. And that is so powerful Absolutely. for our kids. Chapter eight, uh, serenity tool number six, focus on your emotions. I love your quote here. It says, don't get upset with people or situations. Both are powerless without your reaction. And that is a quote from Buddha. And I was just like, you know, that is so true. Your reaction gives so many things power. <laughs> And I needed to say this to myself last night as my kid wouldn't go to bed and she's throwing things across the room because she's so mad. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm just giving her reaction after reaction. And I'm like, why can't I just calm down myself? Yes. Like, you know. Yes. Well, you talk about law of attraction here. This is genius. The tale of two wolves. I think so many people are familiar with this. Um, but you give a little picture thing that quickly tells the tale of two wolves and I'll not go into it because I want people to, to go get this book and, and read this. But the wolf who wins is always the wolf that you feed. And we talk about this all the time. I was even talking to some of my girlfriends this morning. I'm like, hey, whatever you feed is what you're going to get more of. You pick it. Take it wisely and it requires yep. some self-thought the law of attraction what you give into is what you're going to get more of that is so important in parenting but it's also so important in how what we spend time thinking about and our yeah. own energy and so i think that has a whole lot to do with the mental component of all of this and how we view what we are giving to our children, what we are, are we enough for them? And, and all of these things, we have to constantly stay on top of the mental game. I love the wheel of focus. Yeah. Anna Maria Nagy, I think is the person, but it's a helpful tool you can find and print out to help focus your emotions on what you do want to feel <laughs> when it's challenging. Yes. You know what I love about this? And I'm telling you, I printed this thing off and I have already emailed it to some of my clients. I even used it myself because here's the deal. Mm -hmm. This is it for those of you guys listening. Again, it circles and in the middle, you are going to write what you want. But then on the outside, it has spaces for you to start kind of proving to yourself what you're doing to move in the direction of getting what you want. And so I did, you have um, done a great job. You provide the link. So it's real easy in PDF form to just get that and print that off. And it gives you instructions with it. Sometimes you need to see in writing that you are making progress. That's right? True. And so. Yeah, and what you already have, like they could just be little things that you already have, you know. That's exactly right. Actually, that is a, a, a great point. Things that you've already, steps you already have taken to move yourself mm -hmm. in the direction of what you want. Maybe it's the fact that you got a lactation consultant. Maybe it was the fact that you actually reached out to even make the phone call or even made the appointment. That, that can be the hardest part sometimes is just asking for help. Yeah. So, so this call, wheel, it's called a wheel and it helps get every, it helps get you moving. You kind of gain more power. The more you write, the more power you kind of gain as you go mm -hmm. around your wheel. So that, that's a good, a good visualization. It's the idea of snowballing. Yes. You know? That it just, um, it grows bigger and bigger for you. For, and, and there's nothing like your confidence when you can look at what really you are actually making progress. You just forget it because you're tired and you've been sleeping. Why I love your book so much is because there are really good practical tools for any and all of us that are just living life. <laughs> yes. And if anyone needs help using them, I do do coaching with it. You're welcome to log on to my website and book a coaching, coaching session with me too. Yes, because that's one of the things that I wanted to say is that not only are you a teacher and a mother and a wife and a parent, so a life coach and you help women work through these things. And that is um, something that is not my expertise at all, which is why I love bringing people on here so that I can give my more options of things that are not my expertise. Um, and so, I love your expertise. <laughs> that's why we work together. Um, and so your that's last right. one is um, seven. I mean, your last one, you have 10. Your next one is seven. That's affirmations. One of the things I love about this is letting go all or nothing. 
that all or nothing, all or nothing thinking is paralyzed me. And I can't tell you how many situations in my life where I would not move because I was all or nothing kind of thinking. It's hard. It's hard. It's easier to cling to all or nothing because we feel like we know it or we don't or we're comfortable in it or we're not. And if we can decide to live in the gray area a little bit, that's where the growth happens. And that's where we gain our confidence. Yes. And you know, being in the gray has never been my forte. (laughs) Me too. Guess what parenting is going to do to you. (sighs) It's going to make everything better at everything. (laughs) (laughs) it's true (laughs) it's true the next part is uh number eight and that's mindfulness um and this is where you really talk a lot about the um trying to reduce stress meditation those types of things what would you like to share with us about that that it it seems like it can be very challenging to do but With mindfulness, you're literally just observing what is going on around you without judging. So I have this whole part of the book with the Lotus where it's like all this self-analyzation and we're really working on ourselves and there's all this stuff. And so the yin and the yang is, you know, you also need time to just be present, just enjoy time with your kids and don't judge any of it. Just watch the baseball game and have fun and live it and enjoy it. And just breastfeed and enjoy whatever, you know, the little coos and everything. And yeah. um, just be in the present. That's it. Just okay. let yourself go. Because those are the experiences that when we die, we're going to be glad that we had. And so mm. if you're not in the moment and you're on your phone, and I'm guilty of this too, I'm on my phone networking or scrolling or whatever, you know, I'm robbing myself of everything that I wanted, which mm-hmm. is the experience right in front of me. So that's right. You know, our brains are wired to constantly be reworking the past, what's happened Mm -hmm. and preparing us for all potential things that happen in the future. I work through this a lot when I do anxiety uh, work with people. It is very, very hard for our brain to actually shut down the past and the future and actually be in the present. It's not wired to do that very well. And that's why meditation is so very hard. And it is called a practice because it requires (laughs) doing it more than once. And we're just, our brains are not wired very well that way. It always wants to be rehashing the past and preparing us for the future. Now, the next part is reframing your past. Of course, you know, I'm going to be all about that. (laughs) Aren't we all? (laughs) That's all right. What therapist is not going to be all about reframing your past? But I love your initial quote. Don't judge yourself by your past. You do not live there anymore. Um, I I think that that is a, a helpful thing. Although for many people, their past has to be dealt with because it's been abusive and traumatic and that plays a role in how they parent and their confidence in parenting. And it's so far in their subconscious that there's definitely time that that needs to be. Yeah. So that's why we have to reframe it and, and feel and honor that. So then your next part is, um, number 10, your mom tribe. Your quote here, it takes a village to raise a child, which is an African proverb, and it's nothing more true than that. The reality is we were not meant or made to do this alone, especially in a time right now where we are realizing through COVID that we have been so isolated from each other. We never realized how much we truly needed to be in the presence of each other, even if it wasn't talking for even those of us who are fairly introverted and spend quite a bit of time by ourselves and are comfortable with that. It's even triggered some of us. We really need to be in the presence of other people and to find your mom tribe. And there's so many groups and you um, talk about that on here and get stories of other women. One of the things I have found in group coaching is that I actually don't have to do a whole lot. (laughs) Yeah, because we all have so much to offer each other. Yeah, that's right. And every time in group coaching work, they say, I am so relieved I had no idea how much I needed to know and didn't even realize that I felt this way, that I felt alone and that there were other mothers 
who were actually going to bed crying over the very same things I was. Yes, especially for women like with postpartum depression or anxiety, even before babies, Mm -hmm. you know, the connection we used to have before we had like this, this industrialized Western society was one of cave dwelling. And I know that seems super, you know, a long time ago, but when a woman couldn't breastfeed her baby, well, we had wet nursing and we gave the baby to the next mom and the next mom fed the baby because we were that tight knit of a community yeah. that if you didn't have the milk, someone else did. It was right there. Yeah. You know, there was no there was no buying formula and this and that and, and leaning all on your own. And now you have to hire someone to help your consultant. You know, maybe your mom doesn't know. Maybe your mom formula fed or whatever. But, you know, there's we're just not as connected as we used to be. We are we are put here to love one another and support and care for one another type of connection yes you know and it it can get so judgmental and crazy in today's world (laughs) it it is that's right i think i think you're right and i would love to wrap this up by your example of the cork i have thought a lot about this cork Oh, and I love wine. So I was like, I'm ending with some wine because I love me some red. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, a great way to end. And you have a, a great picture of it too. I will read this part that's from, um, let's see, you, this Abraham Hicks. Is that who this is yes. from? Yes. Okay. Yep. Take a hold of that cork and hold it under the water. That's you, you complaining about your mother. That's you complaining that you're not making enough money. That's you, irritated that some condition has not lined up just right for you. That's you, misunderstanding your power. So you're holding the cork under the water. That's what negative emotion is. That's what resistance is. That's the unnecessary thing you've learned along your physical trail as you've been trying to find your way. And you say in here, if we could stop holding ourselves underwater and we could learn that our cork is made to float automatically. This is the original nature of our well-being, effortless, simple, and freeing. Attempts to control the outside circumstances of our lives will never make us deeply happy, nor will they change the outside permanently. I just loved um, that analogy of the effort of trying to hold cork under the water. It's just futile. It's so stressful. And we don't even realize we're doing it. And some of it is thought patterns that, like you said, from our parents or that's just in our subconscious. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things that's real easy is like realizing that taking responsibility for whatever it is, taking self-responsibility gives us our power back. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, oh my God, I fought with this recently. Like I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to lose weight. And I, I've been on a whole bunch of paths for this and I made a lot of growth Uh and I was really stuck for a long time on, I don't want to count calories because I just don't want to, (laughs) and you don't have to, but I think for me, that was something that was holding me back. And I was really holding my cork under the water and giving Mm -hmm. my power away and not taking responsibility. Whereas if I could just relax, put it in the app, it takes five minutes. Mm -hmm. That could actually be a good tool for me. You know, yeah. <laughs> so we do this to ourselves. And on, on one of the apps, all you do is have to just scan the, the barcode and it puts it all you on the scan it in. You don't even actually you scan it out. in. <laughs> you know, you don't need to be obsessive about it, but you know what? It can be a good tool. And I need to allow myself to stop getting in my own way. I get in my own way all the time. <laughs> yep. I, I do too. I do too. Well, I love how you say in here, um, that happiness is right in front of you right now. Um, May you find more enlightenment as you continue along your journey and may you inspire the same happiness in others as you also come alive. Happy breastfeeding and cheers on mama. I think that is fantastic. And I thought, uh, what a great way to end the book. You then, by the way, have one more chapter where you list a lot of resources that is extremely helpful, very user-friendly uh, for moms to be able to, to connect uh, to. And I just, I think that you have done a phenomenal job. I think moms, whether you are nursing or not, whether you are have newborn babies or not moms to be but grandmothers 
people who are going to be buying um, baby gifts. This book is full of support, encouragement, and useful tools that really do help move the needle forward. And I, I think that you have just done an incredible job and I'm super proud of you for doing this uh, in 2020 when everything else was kind of crazy and you were also trying to basically heal yourself and I, and I can relate to that. Thank you. It was a bucket list item and I, I, I'll share this with everybody. I told Jill at the beginning, she said, did you always know that you wanted to be an author? And I said, well, I, I always wanted to be a teacher and I've always wanted to be like a guider. You know, I've, I've loved it when people guided me. That really made it an impact on me. Um, and then in my 20s, I, you know, I'm very solid in my career. I'm in my 30s now. And in my mid 20s, I picked up my husband at the bar. And it's funny because people don't meet like that anymore. People meet online, but I literally just walked into this bar, looked him up and down and I was like, wow, this guy is hot. <laughs> I, I want to be with this guy. He is hot. And, um, you know, we ended up hooking up and I thought he would be a one night stand. And here we turned out married with two beautiful children. And he said to me on our second date, he gave me a call back and he said, you know, let's go on another date. And I was like, wow, I can't believe he called me, but great. And he's like, well, what, what, what's something you always wanted to do? And I was like, I've always wanted to author a book. Like I've always wanted to be an author. And he goes, me too. And, and I had no idea what it would be about. And I just want to tell people that just keep following your passions and just keep coming alive because you don't need to be a doctor. You don't need to be in that field of study. I'm not like a lactation consultant or anything. I don't offer any physical advice in this book. It's not that type of book. And, um, we all have so much to offer one another. And so you need to remember that and you need to just come alive with your passion and it will open doors for you left and right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I um, want to make sure that everybody, I love your story of how you met your husband. I think that's great. Um, <laughs> how do we find you? You're on social media. Tell me real quick where we can. Yes. Yeah, so I am on Facebook um, and all the tags are Mama Your Worth. It's Y O U R, Mama Your Worth. Um, same for the Instagram tag at Mama Your Worth. Um, I have a webpage you'll see linked, and the book is available actually right on Amazon. Um, if you don't have Amazon, you can contact me. I can give it to you through my own store here. Um, but it's great. It's Prime shipping. It's free. It's free shipping if you have Amazon Prime. And uh, the mail's a little slow right now, but it was. It's supposed to come to you in two days. Yeah. Um, so you can get that relief you need. And you know, everyone trusts Amazon pretty much. So yeah, that'll be awesome. I will yeah. make sure that I tag all of those links uh, for you listeners so that you will have it, uh, time your investment. And if you gave this as a gift, you are giving them a fantastic gift for that mother. So, well, Sarah, thank you so very much, um, for meeting with me today and sharing your story, um, and sharing your book with us because you truly are going, giving out into the world, um, something that I know it's kind of like birthing another baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. And I, I love following you as well. And the chaos to calm is something all of us can relate to. So I can't wait to see that grow and bloom and see your gift really affect millions as it deserves to. So. Well, thank you. And you too. All right. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you so very much. And I will uh, close it out here. So that wraps up my conversation with Sarah. And I want, if you hear anything in this conversation today to hear and realize that you do have what it takes there may be some additional skills you need and this book is where you need to start but you do have what it takes there is hope you can do this and you can do it well and you can enjoy it so thank you for listening to the uplift effect podcast and also don't forget to share this with your friends, to send the links to them, to subscribe, to thumbs up, to comment. All of those things are helpful for feedback for me, but it also gives us the opportunity to help reach more moms, to encourage them, to give them support in this journey. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing, and I will see you and talk to you next Monday.